So today we're just gonna finally sort of those brassicas. It has been a brassica massacre. So I've got a field of kraut cabbage here and it was absolutely massive. It's tipping down with rain, but I'm gonna clear this out and I'm gonna, actually I'm going back in the shed. Oh, right, now I'm in the shed. <laughs> I just hit a rake. It's absolutely belting down now, but this will give me a perfect chance for me to show you what I've been buying again. So I have bought some tulips for the other plot. I love tulips. So I've bought an, a range of tulipa tutti frutti. And I also bought some tulipa midnight moments. Now I'm gonna mix all these up and put them all in the bed in one area. And I'm hoping I'll have a nice flush of color in the spring. I've got loads of daffodils around this plot and tulips as well, but I think I'm gonna primarily keep to certain colors on that plot so it'll, go, it'll look good, I think, I think. I also succumbed to buying more onions. I put all my onions in at the other plot, but I went past them and I thought, I'll buy more. So I bought some Electra Red. I bought some Senshu uh, Brown. And I also bought some Radar. Now, I, these were the ones that tempted me because I wanted to buy these and I couldn't find them. So I managed to buy three bags for a fiver and there's plenty in this, so you can't go wrong really. So they'll go somewhere. And the good thing about planting onion sets in the winter is, is around the early part, like February, March, when it starts getting a bit warmer and you want those spring onions. If you've got spring onions in, great. But if not, you can pull these, strip off the first layer and you've got a beautiful spring onion. So you can use a few of them for that as well. Guys, it's tipping down. So this rain wasn't planned. The rain had belted down this morning. It was supposed to be a clear, nice afternoon. But that is plot life for you. And you know, if you, whether or not you're planting out in your garden or at your growing space here, show must go on. So I'm not going out in this rain to show me, but there's a jobs in the greenhouse I can do. I can clear it all off because all the tomato plants need to come out now. So I'm going to go do that now. So the greenhouse has started to be empty now and God, it looks terrible in here. It actually looks terrible. But the plan is I've got some cardboard here and I'll use that outside on a bed for no dig. And inside here, everything's coming out now the next day. And I'm gonna pour in some extra crops I think that can be protected over winter. And we'll see how they get on. So I bet that rain startled the white fly a little bit. There's still a little bit on the plot, but I'm sure once it starts getting a bit colder, that should knock that on the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stake up the Red Bull Sprouts now. Evesham is special and the kales have already been done a few weeks ago but they are starting to now knock over a little bit out with the wind and the wind does increase on my, you know, in my growing space. So I'll stake this up. The filter kraut has had a bit of damage on the top of it. I think from maybe pigeons because I are netted, but I think underneath will be perfect. And I think the chickens will enjoy it as well, but not all of it. I've grown it purposely so that I could just take a few leaves off, give them to them all through the winter. That's the plan anyway. Right, let's get this done. So I've staked all the sprouts in now. All it was just a metal pin, two cable ties going around, and that should give it a bit of stability. So let me show you the disaster that's happened this year. So apart from the fact that the Swedes underneath are looking okay, look. Oh, they've been eaten to death by flea beetle. But you'd think, and white fly by the looks, but you'd think that they'd impact, but look at the size of those Swedes. So there is a bit of a massacre going on in there. The other brassicas seem to be going okay, to be honest. Thankfully, these ones are looking absolutely lovely. I'm so happy with them. The cabbages, not so much. We've had a bit of rain and quite a few slug attacks, but overall, I'm happy. So as you've just seen, oh, I've got my new little toy on the plot and I absolutely love it. I know what they say, boys and their toys, but this little buggy now, it's basically a glorified wheelbarrow, but it's so much better now that I can lug things up to the other plot and back down. And there's no worrying about lifting that wheelbarrow 
especially when I'm bringing manure back and forth and compost. That's a game changer for me. So I'm really happy that I go in. So I just say a massive thank you to everyone who sent me a lovely message about sugar. Sadly, I came over and sugar wasn't very well. I took her home and I nursed her all night and then I made a vet appointment for the next day and sadly sugar passed away. One thing I am contemplating doing, and you'll probably be shocked that I'm, that I'm even thinking of doing this. I'm thinking about taking this cover off the mini polytunnel. Now that I've got a big polytunnel that's going to be up the top and my greenhouse, I'm contemplating whether or not I really need this this year, even though I absolutely love it. I need to think of the bigger picture. So first tunnel they gave me when I had this kit, the actual net for it as well that you can use for brassicas. So what I think I'll do is, I think I'll take it off and I'll put the green netting on it and I'll use this then for brassicas. Like, and it should keep the cabbages nice and yeah, I'm, I'm toying with the idea still whether or not to do it because, but I know I'm not going to use all the spaces and it would just be silly to have three areas that are under plastic, you know? And with a big poly tunnel at the top and the greenhouse, it's just a big area to use just for chilies and peppers now, which I can do those up the top. So the idea is I might unclip it and it's an easy thing to do. Put the net over, clip it back down and I might even use the plastic then later on for a cold frame or something. But yeah, that's the idea I'm going with because one of them's got to go. I don't need three, definitely don't need three areas that are going to be really undercover. So as much as I had a, success, a massive success under this and one has to go. Another area that I have considered future plans for is this area down here. Ideally, I want more space for the chickens. If bird flu is gonna become a prevalent thing and always, it's always gonna be here now and an issue, the girls will need more space. So I'm considering whether or not to expand a little bit out that side for them or turn this into an area for them. There's still some future plans for that. And also this compost area, I'm considering having my compost area on my other plot. And this area becoming somewhere where I can either sit and also where the chickens can roam. It'll be just be fenced all the way down. So there's plans, so ideas floating around everywhere. And I'm sure you do the same with your garden and you go around and think that could be better there for a season. That could be, everything can be moved and changed. But that's what I'm toying about with the chickens. They will need more space if this is going to become an issue all the time where I got to keep locking them out all the time. And I hate it. I actually hate it for like three or four months and last year was even longer so that's where I'm going with that. Also I've got loads of buckets on the floor that now can have their rightful place on the other plot so there'll be no more buckets. I will have more space in this area and the rhubarb doesn't need to be down here now either because I've already got rhubarb up there so I'm going to donate that to somewhere else. Another thing that I've been considering is taking these beds up. I've got another one of these and putting them on the other plot. That's another idea I've been trying with and, and making this area, if I do have that as the chickens behind, of some kind of like bench with a table so I can do, you know, reveals and show you my harvests. Because there's nowhere on this plot where I can like show you, you know, like sit down and show you what I've got. And I'm always, you know, I know I'm always running around, but if I want to have my lunch and stuff, I normally sit in the shed and I'd like an area here that I can now sit down and enjoy as well. So that will take precedent this year where I need places where I can relax as well and, and hide away. So as you can see now they're all staked up. I've removed all the lower leaves and hopefully these are giving me some nice i knew that the red bulls were going to give me smaller sprouts but i wanted to try them and to be honest i probably not going to do them again they weren't the best and a lot of them you know died out but yeah it's a lesson learned so i'm now going to put in the rest of my garlic and this bed and this bed will be set for garlic this year it gets a lot of sun so I'm hoping that I'll have a good harvest. And I've got so much that I've saved. Oh, I'm gonna fall. <laughs> I've got so much that I've saved and I got some that I bought again because I was tempted. And it's now to decide what goes in here and what goes in there. If you haven't already, take a look at this video of how I plant the perfect garlic. 
I'm Danny and this is The Grapevine Garden.